So the, 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 the thing I did want to share with you is that, as we all understand, uh, government extension, the publicly financed extension, is by far not the only source of information or knowledge for farmers. And you, you, you can think of this problem of getting information as a game that was played on television in many countries around the world, uh, who wants to be a millionaire? I think in Georgian it was called who wants to have two, two, 20,000. It was very modest. Who wants to have 20,000? That was the game in Georgia. So the, 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 when you don't know the answer, and this is the situation in which many farmers are, the first option you have is to ask the crowd, right? You ask the crowd, who knows the answer? And typically this will be your neighbors. You talked about neighbors, so you ask your neighbors, how do I do X? <clears throat> and then you get an answer and you have the option of believing or there is something very nasty coming out of this. You have the option of believing or not believing this information. The problem with this particular model of getting information is that very often you will find the whole village converting to a single property. There was a famous story a few years ago in Georgia when many villages adopted the production of uh, garlic. And it, of course it turned into a major disaster. Somebody discovered that garlic is a great thing. Everybody asked this neighbor, and this became a fashion. But then the next year it became a disaster, because how much garlic does a country need? <clears throat> that's, that's one problem with this, um, uh, this particular model of getting information. The other, once you are in this game, and you are, if you are not satisfied with the wisdom of the crowd, one other thing you can do, you can eliminate, it's called 50-50, you know this uh, option, yeah? 50-50, you can eliminate some bad options. Uh, in, if you apply this problem to agriculture, the, the way to think of it is you go to a shop which sells uh, fertilizer, and you ask them, you know, I'm growing uh, grapes in Cafeti, so what fertilizer? should I use? And of course they will tell you, because they sell a uh, uh, you know, couple of fertilizers and they say, this is absolutely the best. So maybe it's not, maybe not the right choice for you, but they eliminated all the other choices. And so they, they tell you, this is it. This is your choice. And we, have, we immediately understand what's bad about it. Another, another way of uh, eliminating uh, the bad options is also bank. A bank can be thought of uh, as a mechanism to eliminate a bad choice. You go to a bank with a, with a business proposal and you say, this is what I want to do. The bank looks at your proposal, looks at the financials of it, looks at the product you're trying to develop, and they will tell you, sorry, this is a bad choice. They will not tell you what to do, but they will eliminate for you the bad choice. Now, finally, once we, are, we ran out of these options, the wisdom of the crowd and the 50-50 the option, we have the last option. The last option is to ask the expert. You call the expert. And then the question becomes, who is this expert? And I would argue that in most cases, the expert is not the government extension. And I'm, I'm, it's certainly not in the Georgian case. I mean, the, uh, the, one, the one expert I see very often now being used in Georgia, in rural areas, is, it has a name, Hello Google. It has that name, you know, we call Hello Google, how do I check the quality of my soil? Hello Google, how, which fertilizer is a good fit for the acidity of my, of my soil? And so on and so forth. The problem with Mr. Google is it only speaks English. And so a challenge many Georgian farmers face is how to get the same content in the language they understand. There's very little of it in, in, in English. There is quite a bit of it in Russian. So what I see farmers do, they are limit themselves to the choice of Russian language videos, sometimes articles, how to build a hydroponic um, uh, feed production plan, how to grow or produce a certain product, and they don't know how. So the, 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 a challenge for us, uh, David, and for all of us, would be perhaps to understand that this is a hugely popular resource, Mr. Google, but to create the content <coughs> the video content in particular, that would be fit for the 21st century. And in a way, go completely go around the problem of poor extension institutions. Because people can find this information by themselves. They don't need anybody to, to, to tell them how to do X, Y, and Z. They can find this information online. Two more points, if I may allow. 
Talking of experts, still on the line of experts, there are two other possibilities to get good expert advice, very often now used in Georgia. One of them is extension, as was mentioned here, by businesses. Now, there are two kinds of extension by businesses. One is a business that sell you stuff, and there is a very different model of extension where there are, these are businesses that buy you stuff. And these are very different. The first model, I would argue, is of the kind of the 50-50. Kind. They eliminate choices. The second is sort of narrow, it can be just about potatoes, it can be just about grapes, but in fact they want you to produce a good product. And so they will tell you exactly what you need to do to produce in the right quantity, in the right quality, at the right time. So this is being used, and I'm, I'm, I'm seeing this everywhere in Georgia, private extension by buyers of agricultural products. One last point, and this is my last point, is the neighbor, still back to the neighbor possibility, a foreign neighbor. A foreign neighbor, and we have quite a number of foreign neighbors in Georgia, are a fantastic source of innovative ideas. We have South African farmers, we have Indian farmers, we have now farmers from Ukraine, which has its own problems. So there is a possibility to innovate by looking over the fence into what does your foreign neighbor, as opposed to the guy you grew up with, it's probably knows as much as you do, and doesn't know as much as you do. So all of these options beyond extension are possible. Extension should be aware of these options and work with them, not ignore them. I so much wanted to talk about who wants to be a millionaire that I, that I forgot about higher education. <laughs> uh, but, but absolutely, there's no, no question about the role of higher education. The people who will do the extension, they have to be educated. And th there we go. Uh, unfortunately, uh, the, the challenge again is to attract the right kind of people into this occupation. So that it's a combination of very good pedagogical skills and also some technical skills to ability, the ability to, to, to master complicated material. And uh, the, the challenge for us is really to attract the right kind of people. And this is a twin challenge. It's a challenge of uh, a challenge of, uh, 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 of course, uh, providing a promise of a good career and, and good compensation. I, you know, the, the model of compensating uh, these people at the level of teachers will not help. In our country, uh, teachers are the least compensated uh, category of uh, employees. The least. So we have to start a little bit higher. But the, uh, the second challenge is also about amenities and services that I talked about before. We have to make sure that people who go into extension and who will be living in Kakheti, will be living in Tilar, let's say, they will have to have access to certain services. Otherwise, they will not go there. So it's about making this occupation uh, a prestigious and, and a good one. We need very well-educated, uh, well-trained people in extension. And we don't need a lot of them. I mean, we're talking, well, maybe we need more than... The population, of course, is very large and all that, but let's be realistic. We have uh, uh, 64, 65 municipalities. We, we have one, one center in each municipality, which is probably too little, but that's what we plan for. And there is um, somebody presented today, there will be four to six people in each. Okay. Instead of now starting to design a higher education program, preparing extension officers for the future of Georgia in 2025, I think it's much simpler to just recruit in among the young population, people who probably have some knowledge of agriculture, but have the ability to learn, recruit a certain number of individuals, and send them to Switzerland, send them to Germany for one year or two years, that they would get to know exactly the approach the Swiss and the German and the Danish approach, how to deliver extension. And, and that would be the fastest response to the problem we have. And the cost, I assure you, the cost of doing it would be far, far less than trying to recreate anything similar for 2025. It will be just, I don't know, 30, 40,000 per, per, per student. 